catch is over. Control, two feet. In this case, he gets three and a football move. What's the football move? That third step. Additionally, he reaches here. So it's another football move. He's reaching for the goal line. The process of the catch is now over. The fact that he's going to the ground no longer counts in this situation. So in this situation, he's short of the goal line. Dez is short right there. We place the ball just outside the goal line and it's first and goal going in. Next play. Control. Here's a situation where instead of two feet down, we have another body part, which is the knee. Once he reaches over, he breaks the plane, this play is over, we have a touchdown. Had this happened in the middle of the field, and he had not recovered this ball, it would have been a fumble, because he was not touched. However, in this situation, he recovers the ball. So again, we go back to control, two feet, or another body part, which we have here, you reach, that's the football move. The process of the catch is now over. Control, two feet down, he reaches, he doesn't have to go down. Last year in this situation, he had to survive the ground. So when that ball comes up, it's an incomplete pass. No mas, that's over. This was a difficult one to explain to our fans. Control, one, two, three, we're gonna stop at four feet. So that's your football move. He hits the ground, now this is a fumble. This happens in the field of play, it's a fumble because he hasn't been touched on the way to the ground. So once the process is over, if the player is touched and he hits the ground, it's over. In this situation, it's, it's gonna be a fumble. May, are we going to have more fumbles? We might, but again, we want to take these great catches and make them catches. That's what our fans want, that's what our players want, that's what our coaches want. Any questions on catch, no catch? We got to have one question, come on. What about the, the Zach Miller play last year in New Orleans? How would that be evaluated now? Touchdown. Uh, how about the superior play? Great question. We took away where it says movement or slight movement, and we now have loss of control. So if we see total loss of control, if we see loss of control, that's the way we're gonna rule it. But we understand there are situations where the ball is gonna move. For example, we had in the Super Bowl play, where the receiver took the ball and moved it from one hand to another. Did he lose control? No, so therefore it was a touchdown. We have to see loss of control. That would be a touchdown. Who would review it? Well, I mean, not, not who, but I mean, in deciding if that's a slight movement or not having total control. Well, that slight movement is out. So it would have to be total loss. It would have to be loss of control. Other than the third step and, uh, you know, a football move, extending the ball, pulling it in, you said there are other uh, things that could be interpreted that way. Is that going to leave a lot of subjectivity? To not really. Not really, because most of, the play, most of these plays that we saw, there was a football move in there. We saw reach, we saw the player putting it back, trying to bring it back into his body. We saw a player defending himself. So most of these were self-explanatory. Are you worried that there is gonna be a- I'm always worried, but go ahead. <laughs> a lot more fumbles, I know you said there might be some, and on top of that, when an official would blow a whistle now to allow the play to continue because whether it's a incompletion or a fumble. Well, one of the things we did when we were discussing this rule is we brought in officials, current day officials. I'm an old official, so I don't count anymore. We brought in current day officials and we said, can you officiate this? They said, yes, with no problem. So they know now that before they were blowing the whistle when we went to the ground, we're no longer going to the ground in these situations, so it's play football. Al, do you consider this a new catch rule or tweaking the old one? We've basically rewritten a rule. Would you agree, Rich? Yeah, it's a, it's a, we, we tried to tweak, we wanted to tweak. We've been tweaking for the last six years on this rule and we realized that's the problem. We need her to start over. And I think Coach Harbaugh, John Harbaugh gets credit because the Ravens, they brought in a proposal that basically said C, in other words, you got A, control, B, two feet, C. What's C? They said C is three steps. You either take three steps or it's incomplete. 
That's it, just three steps. And one nice thing it did is it got to us the idea of we need to put objective standards as the third act, objective. And we didn't think the third step was enough. We wanted the guy reaching for the football. In other words, Jesse James under the third step is not a catch. We thought it should be a catch. Um, so, I, But I think one thing that Coach Harbaugh did is he got us to, to think about the fact that we needed to get out of the element of time. How long did he have? We needed to get to objective elements, and that's what we tried to do. That's a touchdown. Was there a debate over what a reach is? Not really. I think everything can, everyone can see it's basically self-explanatory. Chris, do you remember when the football move was taken out of football? Yeah, it's 2014. Yeah. What do you recall about that? Did we, did we get it? Because it was subjective then. That was really sort of the narrative about that. We have had, uh, on this rule, catch no catch, we've had probably three years where we've had some challenges. It's always been two or three plays that got into replay and got reversed. Remember, the officials on the field are pretty good at this. Des Bryant was, ca was counted as a catch. Jesse James was a catch. Devontae Freeman, the play you just saw, touchdown. Um, but in replay, the language got us, right? So I remember in 2014, it was the object of, hey, we have this standard on defenseless player, when that player becomes a runner, and that is when he can ward off a, an opponent, protect himself. Why don't we move that into catch? And, and we did to try to make it seamless to the on-field officials. The problem was it extended the period even further, and, um, and that didn't serve us well. I think what we've done by, by doing that in 2014 and by continuing to expand on the going to the ground language, we just made it harder. And uh, you know, if Johnny and Jimmy were out playing in the backyard, they, they, they know what a catch is, and all of a sudden our language, because of replay, was not allowing that to happen. As you guys consider the possibility of more fumbles on a play like this, do you consider the fumble an exciting play for the game and it's something that does you know, generate either energy for fans or, you know? Yeah, I've been on the committee a long, it's a long time, you know, 20 plus years, and I would tell you that we've always heard the fear of the fumble. Oh, we gotta watch catch, no catch, because there's so many fumbles. Again. We've looked, we've done the numbers, we're not quite as scared. And I think if you end up with 10 more fumbles in a year, but you save five of the most exciting plays of the year, it's trades you make every day. Rich, you said that you know it's been years that the competition committee and others have defended the previous uh, versions of the catch rule. What, was there one impetus this year? Was it Roger said at the annual meeting yeah, at the Super Bowl that he wanted to, uh, an in-depth look at this? What changed? What was one or the number of things that he did to make this happen? I think Des Bryant was the start. Of, of us realizing that, that maybe there was something that was going to have to change. Um, because after that, it, it just seemed like every time we got into one of those plays, there was a debate. The language, we thought, <clears throat> was somewhat clear. The problem was the language had this phrase in it that the trump, the ground trumps everything. So if the guy's going to the ground, it, it trumped everything. The problem with that was is that just, it just didn't make a lot of sense. So when we saw the Super Bowl this year, he had two big plays both of which I thought were very clear. Al left them, they stood. I think that scared us. We said, hold it now. Those shouldn't even be, those are catches. One guy hurts, he's definitely a runner, and the other guy definitely has control of the ball, but our language is a, li is a little iffy, so we need to start again. Rich, when did the going to the ground, does that go back to Bert Emanuel? Goes, no, Bert Emanuel goes to the slight movement of the ball, so that's a different one. Okay. We watched all of these in sequence, right? So the first one that starts this debate is, is a, Wayne Corbett catch, it's just a three yard play that I've seen so many times, you can't really see it because it's so grainy. Al has, you can't really see it. Um, then Bert Emanuel, then we get the modern day. Um, and every time we added language to try to cure a situation, and that usually is not a good, so that did not serve as well. Al, did you say in the Jesse James play that that was not at the goal line, would that have been a fumble then? If he doesn't regain control, yes. But the process of the catch is over. So if he were not touched, and the ball will become loose and it's a fumble.